Hey Code Crew, the iOS Notes app is pretty much done, but there are just some finer details to take care of. If you haven't seen the earlier lessons, I highly recommend you do that first. I'll link to it in a card on the screen or in the description below. All right, Ali, over to you. Right now that we've added all the features like updating, deleting, adding, and reading the notes, let's do some cosmetic changes in our actual app. So the first thing we want to do is, so when I add a note, I only see the notes title. I also want to see a snippet of the actual note body and I want to see the date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the main storyboard and in my prototype cell, I'll make it a bit bigger and I'm going to add first a label. Actually, before I add a label, I'm going to add in a horizontal stack view or sorry, a vertical stack view and I'll drop it in my prototype cell and then I'm going to make it fit in my cell. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain it to all sides. So I'll do zero, 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 zero. And so stretch it across my actual cell. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in three labels. So I'll drop in a label. And I'll drop in another label. And I'll drop in one more label. Now I'm going to go to my stack view. And in the identities... I'm going to make the alignment or sorry, the distribution fill equally. So now it, all my items are equally filled. So the top one is going to be my title. The middle one will be the note and the bottom one will be the date. So now what I can also do is go to my labels and I'll just center them. And then for the title, I'll make the size a bit bigger. I'll make it maybe 20 or 22. And I'll make it bold. And then for the note, I'll make it 20 and regular. And then for the date, I'll make it 17 and thin. So we can just use thin. Like that. Also, where it says truncate, we can truncate the tail, which is fine. But you can also truncate the middle and head. And I can show you what those do when we actually start seeing the notes up here. So if we run our app right now, it's actually not going to work. So I ran my app and you see that it says here, label, 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 and it says new note. So we actually want to put this new note over here where it says label. And the way we're going to do that is actually we're going to make a new file. So click your folder and click new file. And we're going to make a Cocoa Touch class this time. And we can just call it proto prototype cell, or we can call it note prototype cell. And this is actually a subclass of, and then if you see here, UI table view cell. So then We'll just call it note prototype cell and it's a subclass of UI table view cell. So let's save that and let's save it in our project. So now what I'm going to do is split the screen and go to my main storyboard file again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all three of them. But before I do that, I'm going to click my prototype cell in the hierarchy. I'm going to go to the identities and I'm going to make the class note prototype cell. So now that is note prototype cell, I can drag these items into my class right here. So I'll drag the first item and I'll just call it title. I'll drag the second item and I'll call that note. And I'll drag the third item and I'll call that date. So now I'll go back into my view controller. And if I scroll down to where we customize the cell over here, instead of writing cell.text label, now I can write cell. But before I can write that, I have to write as. So where it says let cell equal DQ reusable cell, I'm going to write as. And then I'm going to write note prototype cell. 
So now what that does, it tells the Swift file or my view controller that the cell is actually a note prototype cell. And a note prototype cell has the title, a note, and a date. And that allows me to customize that now. So I'll go back into my view controller and I'll say cell dot. And if you actually scroll down, you should be able to see the, there's too many, but you should be able to see the actual property. So we can say title dot text is equal to, let's just say note one for now. And let's see if that works. So we're going to re refresh our app. And once it builds, you'll see that it says note one. So now we can actually handle the properties of our actual note prototype cell, like the title, the note, and the date through our view controller, since we casted our cell as a note prototype cell. So let's just copy this and I'll paste it down here, but I'm going to change it from title to note and I'm going to change it to date. And now I'm going to make instead of note one, I'll say notes array to the index path dot row dot title. And I'll do the same for the rest and I'll just change the title to the respective property. So the next one isn't title, it's actually note. And the final one is the date. So now if I refresh my app, it should actually show all the properties. So I'll refresh my app and there I see it. I see new note noted and placeholder. So I can add another note. There's a new note. This is a new note. And once I save this, I'll see here, this is a new note and placeholder. So now we want to change placeholder to the actual date it was created on. So we're going to go into our add note view controller right here. So in my safe click function, I'm going to write let date formatter is equal to capital D date formatter and two round brackets. So this will actually create an instance of It'll actually create a date formatter object and date formatters a built in function in Swift that allows us to create dates. So now we're going to write date formatter lowercase d date formatter dot date format. And that equals is the string and the string will be y y y capital M, capital M, DD. And this actually gives me an error because I'm writing date formatter with a capital D. So I should use date formatter with a lowercase d because that refers to the object we created here. Now last thing we can write is let date is equal to date formatter dot string from date with two round brackets. So now what this does is first it creates a date formatter object and then it tells that date formatter object that we want our date in the format of year, month, and day. And after that I create a string from that date formatter object which I can then pass in as the arguments to my API function calls. So now where we see we were sending placeholder we can just send in date. So both of these where I was sending placeholder in my API functions, I'll just send in date now, just like that. So now if this doesn't give me any errors, I'll actually refresh my app and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to create a new note. I'll type, this is a new note, new note. And once I save it, it should tell me the date I created this on. And there we go, it says 2020-07-29, which means July 29, this note was created. Now another thing we have to make sure is that the user can enter empty strings and it'll save. We don't want to save empty strings because it doesn't make sense. So that's pretty easy. So instead of using an else statement right here, when we're checking that if we're updating or we're creating, we'll write else if. 
and we're going to write else if we're going to reference the title text field and the body text view title text field dot text does not equal empty and and body text view dot text does not equal empty so that means that if the title text field is not empty and the body text field is not empty only then are we going to save it to the server so i'll refresh my app now and i shouldn't be allowed to save empty notes i'll click add note and if i try to save an empty note it'll go back but it didn't save so there we are and now let's clear these out because our delete button works and one more thing we can do just to make it a bit more responsive is that when I click save, it shouldn't go back to the original screen if I haven't successfully saved a note. So for example, I have an empty, I have an empty string here and an empty string here. When I click save, it shouldn't go back to the screen. So what I'll do is I'll just move this into the actual else if function or the else if body. And I'll also copy it and put it in the if statement like that so now if we successfully save only then is it going to go back to the original screen before it went back to the original screen whenever we click the button so now if i run it again i'll see that if i have an empty string and i click the button nothing happens okay so now that our app works there's one last thing we have to do and that's just cleaning up our code to make it more readable and adding some comments so what we're going to do firstly is we're going to our view controller file and actually just organize this code so it's more readable and we know what each function does. The first thing I'm going to do is move our protocol from the top to the bottom. So I'm just going to copy it and erase it and I'll move it to the bottom over the actual extension like that. So it just makes more sense. And what we can do now is if I write a comment with slash slash, I can write mark colon or semicolon dash and I can just say custom delegates so now that actually adds a section to our file called custom delegates so now I can see right here this little section where the custom delegate part starts so if anyone's reading our code or if we're reading our code we know that this is the part where we make our custom delegates so we're gonna do the same for our actual table view delegates so I'm just going to copy these functions. I'm going to move them underneath. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to move it to the end of our view controller class. So at the bottom of it, I'll just paste in that. And I'll just clean it up and I'll also write on this slash slash mark colon dash and I'll say table view delegate table view delegate so now we know these are the functions which actually manipulate our table view and in this we can just say in the actual cell part we can just write instead of in the actual cell part we can just add a comment saying customizes cell to set date note and title just so we know what these do but it's kind of self-explanatory but it's never it doesn't hurt to add a comment on that so the next thing we do is we're going to go to our view will appear and view did appear and view did load and over these i'm just going to add a comment again mark colon dash and i'm going to call these life cycle hooks life cycle hooks because these are different functions that are fired on different parts of the life cycle so for example the view will appear is fired when the view will appear View did appear is fired when the view did appear and view did load is fired the first time the app runs. So since these are different lifecycle hooks, we can categorize them as lifecycle hooks. And inside the view will appear, we can say, we can add a comment saying update the notes array just so we know what's happening. And we can do the same for the view did appear. And inside the view did load, all of this is self-explanatory. We're setting our delegate and we're setting the notes table view delegate so that you don't need really a comment for that. And for IB actions, we're actually going to move them at the very top. So anything we're importing, we want, or anything we're importing or initializing, we want at the very top of our file. And again, you can write 
backslash mark colon and we can just call dash initial ionizations so that's our IP outlet and our notes array just like that and we can paste it there to make it cleaner and the last thing we have left is our actual segue so our segue we can again mark it mark colon dash and I'll just say segue data so it just tells us this is the data we're passing in with our segue and in our actual segue data file I can just write in our segue data function I can just write passes the note and tells the view controller to update instead of add just so we know what the vc.update part does and what the vc.note is equal to notes array table view note index for selected row dot row does just like that so now we can see that our code is pretty organized so if i want to if i have a problem for example my table view i'll just scroll down to the table view parts and i can set it over here fix it over here or if my data isn't rendering properly i would go to my custom delegate and see am i getting the right data so now Another thing you can do is you can click Command A and that'll highlight your whole file and you can click Control I and that'll just add some spacing and make sure your indentation is correct. So now our actual view controller looks good. Let's move on to the next file which is our add no view controller. So in this again we want to move all the imports and the initializations to the top. So I'll just copy the IB outlets and I'll move them to the very top of the file. Just like that and I'll remove all the spacing between them and also move my var note and update to the top and again we can do slash slash mark colon in dash initialization like that and now after that I'm going to write slash slash mark colon dash ui buttons so these are all the buttons that fire when we we'll actually click something like we have the delete click or we have the save click. So again, I'm going to remove all the spacing just so it's a bit more compact. And in my actual delete click, I don't think we need to add any sort of comments other than this self navigation controller dot pop view controller. So in that one, I can just write slash slash returns the screen back to the main screen. And for this one, for the save click, we can also write about the date formatter. We can write creates a date string that we can pass in to the database. And if update is true, we can say if the user is updating, update the note rather than than saving just so we understand what it does and if we forget or if we open our code after a long time and we forget what these do we'll know that when update is true we want to update something and set our actual save click to update instead of to add and now after those parts are done our IB outlets are done I'm gonna write slash slash mark and I'll write dash lifecycle hook Again, these are same life cycle hooks in our view our, our view controller, our previous one. So we have one for view will appear and we have one view did load. And again, I'm just removing any extra spacing just to make it more compact. And in our view will appear in the if update is equal to false part, I'll add a comment saying disables the delete button if the user is adding a uh, note and in that I can just write and in comments or in brackets I can just write can't delete something that doesn't exist and in my view to load if update is true I can add another comment saying pre populates the text field if the user is updating a note like that 
and then I'll just remove this comment they added when we created the file and our add note view control is also good and it's very structured so again I'll write I'll click command a control I and then I'll just fix any of our margins or any of our actual spacing problems and the last file we want to actually fix is our API functions and in this we just want to add some comments and again structure it a bit so I can write above our struct I can write slash slash mark dash custom notes struct like that and in our API functions class we can write mark colon dash functions that interact with API it's kind of self-explanatory but it doesn't hurt to add the mark keyword just so we can see them clearly because the mark actually adds a dash or a line between the different sections so it's just a bit more visible and now what we're going to write is sets our custom data delegate and over here over static let functions we can just say creates an instance of the class so the other files can interact with it like that in our fetch notes we can write a comment above saying fetches notes from database and here let data is equal to string say converts converts the JSON converts the response into UTF-8 string format and in our self delegate update array we can say fires off the custom delegate in the view controller and in our add notes we can just say adds a note to the server passing the arguments as headers and we can just copy that and we can paste it for our update update a note updates a note to the server passing the arguments as headers and finally we can say deletes a note from the server passing the argument passing the notes ID as a header again now I'm all I'm gonna do is click command a and control I and I'll fix any of spacing issues I have and all three of our files are now very readable and clear now that our app is done and it does what we want to I just want to take a quick second to look at the different technologies and tools we worked with and any notable things we've done during our production of this app so the first thing we did was install Node.js, MongoDB, Mongoose, and Express, and that allowed us to actually create a server. And before we did anything, we created a Node schema file, which defined our actual data object or Node data object, which held a title, a date, and a note. Then we imported this file into our server, and then we told our MongoDB or to connect with our server using mongoose and then we created four routes a route to create fetch delete and update our notes and the create route would just take in the data and it would create a new note object based on our schema our fetch route would just fetch everything from the database and return it our delete route would take in an id and it would delete the item and our update route would take in an id and also takes in the new data which it would update and then we ran our server on our network using our IPv4 address so any device like a physical iPhone can also interact with our server and it would work as well and then we go into the Xcode where firstly we created multiple screens using a navigation controller which actually allowed us to go between different notes so for example when I click add note it shows me the screen and I can go back to my main screen and that was facilitated by the actual navigation controller and then we defined the different properties we needed for our table view so we told it how many rows we want and the different data we want inside of our actual table view and we also added a custom note prototype cell so that we could have custom information like our title note and date and then we told our view controller to set those as well 
The next thing we did was that we created the API functions class and this functions class would actually interact with our database to fetch, add, update, and delete the notes. And notably, the fetch route actually had a custom delegate, just like how we had a delegate and protocol for our actual table view. We had one for our custom class. We had one for actual API class. We had one for actual fetch notes function as well. So when the server got the data from the fetch notes, what it would do is it would call this update array function, which is a delegate. And then the update array would actually fire off this function, which would just update our notes array. And it would decode whatever data the server sent us using the actual note struct we defined as well. So it would take whatever data the server gave to us and it would turn it into a title, a date, an ID, and a note object. So Xcode could actually work with it. Another notable thing we did was actually send data through segways using our prepare for function. So we told that when we click on an actual item in our table view, we want it to send the note so we can pre-populate the data. So when I click it, I want the data to be pre-populated. And I told it that when we save, we don't want to add something. Instead, we want to update something. And if we go into our add note view controller, we also work with the date formatter to create a date based on when the note was created and we converted that to a string. So those are the main notable things we've done. So this app was actually a good look into server development because we defined a server and we defined a database and we actually interacted with it. And on our front end, we actually made an Xcode app that would actually interact with our server to do certain tasks. But you could see how instead of using our Xcode app, we could actually make a website that would interact with our server because the only thing that was happening which was specific to the iPhone was the actual table view. Everything else was done to the API functions class and these aren't specific to iPhone. So for example, you can make an Android app which would be exactly the same and which would interact with our server in the exact same way to update, delete, add, and fetch. Or you could also create something like a website which would do the same things like fetch, add, update, and delete using the same routes. Congratulations on finishing the full stack iOS notes app. I hope it was a fun experience to not only build the iOS front end app, but also the back end API and database. Now I want to turn it over to you. Do you want to see more full stack iOS app development? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. And on your way down there, if you enjoyed this series, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Oh yeah, definitely check out CWC Plus if you enjoy this app series for more one day builds and courses on other iOS topics. I'll leave a link to it on the end screen of this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one day build.